Um, we're doing back today. I'm trying to figure out some cool stuff to start with. We're in Powerhouse Gym, Tampa. One of the oldest gyms out here. And uh, yeah, we wanted it's a new location. We wanted to switch it up. So let's get it. Today we're gonna start with wide grip pull downs. You know, it's really popular right now to do the the single arm, really close to the body, lat pull down. Still a great exercise. You know, really great for the lats, fully stretched, fully contracted. But, you know, I see a lot of new lifters doing this exercise and not that it's wrong, but at the same time, doing, you know, um, anything bilateral, it can be a bit of a disadvantage, you know, in a sense that you don't really have any weaknesses yet. You know, you don't have to be so isolated when you, in your movement choices. I would prefer like my beginners to do something like this, still um, chest supported T-bar rows, you know, rack pulls, things of that nature. to really build mass because you really, you don't really know what you're missing yet. You don't really have any weaknesses yet. You need to put on muscle everywhere in your body. So um, we're starting out with this because I just want some general mass on the, on the back here. Yeah. Pump cover. Um, basically, like the biggest mistakes I see with this one is people rocking. Um, honestly, just moving the weight isn't gonna work your muscles. That's working everything else. Momentum is not gonna help. It's actually gonna hurt you in the long run when we're trying to build muscle. Outside of that, people are getting really particular with just doing one particular movement for that. This very, very narrow grips pull down, single arm. Well, it's still married in using things like this. And this is gonna kind of bias your teres a little bit more, your teres minor. And when we're biasing that muscle, we can potentially grow our back a little bit wider. So I wouldn't classify an exercise as a, um, a thickness exercise or a width exercise, but I like to think of things, um, I like to think what muscles does this exercise work? And will those muscles growing give me the uh, give me the effect that I want visually? So with this one, it works a lot of different muscles: your teres, your lats, your upper back. So just a general exercise for every muscle in your back to help it grow, help it help it um, get bigger. So yeah. <sighs> Felt it. So I'm just doing two sets here. You know, there's a lot of questions on whether back off sets are better, you know, top off, top sets, back off sets are better than like, just like straight sets, I guess. And the answer is, is whatever you prefer, no matter what is gonna build muscle. The reason I like to back off is because typically if I do three plates of like six to eight reps, the next set I'm not gonna be able to get six to eight reps again with that same weight. I'll probably get like four, or less and I don't want to get four sets that's a little bit too heavy so that's the reason I back off but if you're at a point in your training career or your training journey where you can lift um, the same load for the same amount of reps then go for it I could I would you know argue that maybe you can push yourself a little bit harder you know if you can do the same uh, reps with the same weight the next set but you know that's my advice there So next movement here is chest supported T-bar rows um, with a wider grip, not so much a narrow grip. Um, basically the, the biggest mistake I see here is people not really moving their scapula or their shoulder braids. They're, um, and what I mean by that is they're very fixed when they're doing it. What you really want is to really protract those, that scapula and retract it. So that's the biggest thing there. Let me do one more time. Protract, retract, protract. Notice that when I'm doing that, I'm not like coming off the pad to do it. I'm not throwing my rectus into the movement. We're gonna 
typically what I say with exercises is train the muscle that exercise is for. Um, and I say that because like, you don't need to work your erectors here. This is a poor exercise for erectors. If you want to work your erectors, go do good mornings, rack pulls, hyper extensions. Don't use the T-bar to train your erectors. Use the T-bar to train your lats, your upper back, things like that. So let's go ahead and give it a go. So typically I do T-bar rows here. And I know you're thinking like, yo, rough, you just did T-bar rows over there. The difference is the grip. Um, that one, I did more of a wider grip, focus on like mid traps, um, um, lat fibers as well. Um, this one's a little bit more from arm to tucked in. So I was working a little bit different on muscles, like mainly um, lats in this position here. Biggest mistake I see when people are doing T-bar rows especially with people who have a wider frame or a little bit of muscle is they grab the the v-bar handle and they can't get their lats fully contracted they're basically doing this where really if you got a an attachment that fits your body properly you'll be able to bring your arms all the way back here as opposed to right here i like, see the difference so you want bit lats get a big boy handle and be good to go I can't do like any right like, real hip hinge movement to work my erectus because I always get injured. That's the best thing to do right there. So that like when I do those last 10 seconds, it's mainly my erectus just holding myself in place. Okay. They give it some work. Okay. Yeah. So it's a workaround. Huh. Whew. Whew. <laughs> oh man. On to the next one. All right, so you guys, next exercise is machine preacher curl. Two of the biggest mistakes I see here is one, again, using momentum. It's really hard to mess up preacher curls, but you still can this up by basically when you're curling, instead of pressing that arm into the pad, you're bouncing up like this, using momentum to get that last little bit. Outside of that, the other common mistake I see is people not really progressing properly in this. They think they have to add, you know, the 10 pound or 25 pound plate every time they want to kind of go up in weight. But there are these cool little things called five pounders and even two and a half pounders out there if you can find them. Don't be afraid to use those, those still count. <laughs> and with a smaller body part, you're gonna kind of have to use that stuff like that. So think of it like, you know, it's fine if you're doing a 200 pound squat, if you add 20 pounds, that's 10%, right? If you're doing a 40 pound bicep curl, you add 25 pounds, you add 20 pounds, that's 50%. That's a way bigger increase, even though, you know, 20 pounds doesn't seem like a lot. It depends on what you're putting it onto. So keep that in mind. We're trying to get big arms.
Done there. I thought we had a handshake. What's the handshake again? <laughs> okay, carry me to the next machine. Where is it? I don't know. I don't even know where it is. I can't even see it. <laughs> Now, big thing with curls is, personally, I believe you have to be stricter with curls uh, more so than any other movement. Um, yeah, if you got a great, you got great arms, do what the fuck you want. They're gonna grow no matter what. But if they are a weakness or if there's something you're specifically trying to bring up, it's important that you standardize your form, just because it's so easy to have other things do the work besides your arms or your biceps. And if you're having other things work besides your biceps, then your biceps aren't gonna grow. So very important to be very strict at this exercise. You don't wanna lean back. You don't wanna use your tippy toes to get the weight up. Be very, very locked in, rigid, and just curl in, curl down. It's a very simple movement, but it's very easy to mess up. All right, let's shoot for this. All right guys, so we just did some rear delts, reverse cable flies. Biggest mistake I normally see here, and it's hard to spot, is what you're thinking internally. Most people, when they're doing reverse flies, they're thinking about just getting from point A to point B in the easiest way possible. But what you wanna be thinking about internally is really thinking out, not so much back. Think about how much can I drive these cables out to the side as I'm coming back. That's going to be the best way to engage your delts. I found a lot of people have a hard time killing their rear delts. And that's typically the reason they're not thinking properly inside the head. So next time you're doing rear delts, pull out, not back. All right, guys, so that was some common back day mistakes I typically see in the gym. If you want to get swole, you want to get those back gains, those juicy back gains. Don't make those mistakes. Share, like, subscribe, and hit me up if you found that helpful. Peace.